Coming up on All About Android, we discuss Android Q's custom launcher problem. Google's latest social network is called Shoelace, and that's just kind of funny that they have another social network. Uh, the long-awaited JBL link bar has arrived. The Air TV Android TV dongle. There's an updated uh, Snapdragon 855 Plus, your email, and more on this episode of All About Android. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Check out LegalZoom today to see how they can make life better for you and your business. Visit LegalZoom.com and enter AAA at checkout for special savings. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 429, recorded on Tuesday, July 16th, 2019, your weekly source for latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards, back in the home studio. No kidding. I'm not used to seeing yeah. it. In, in a place where you can use your voice to turn on and off the Christmas lights when they're hanging. Okay. Turn on the living room light. Uh, hey, there you go. oh boy, that's blooming hot. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Let, me, let me turn that off. And I apologize to everyone whose living room light I just turned on that's listening okay. at home or we'll, watching live. I apologize. We'll, we'll mute it on the, on the <laughs> podcast. Uh, joining us, a man who is very familiar with the, uh, the hazards of saying the OKG hot word on a podcast. It's Patrick Norton. How are you doing, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid to speak lest I trigger anything at this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You you are with friendly people who completely understand. Uh, you are welcome. <laughs> uh, ho you do you do so many shows. Host of Tech Thing, uh, AVXL, Twitch, of course, here on the network this week in computer hardware. Uh, also writing for Tested, Digital Trends. You're a busy guy. You know, it's a funny thing. If you stay busy, your children are less likely to not have health insurance or be hungry. <laughs> That's that, that's very good that's, advice that I take to heart, Patrick. Now, that's now what they that, say. Now that I've joined, now that did I've you joined have a child? Trials, I am. I had. I had two. How did? How do I know? How do I know what you're doing at Marvel and your current pinball status? But I don't know the fact that you have two kids. Yeah. I really yeah. hope my wife can't hear this conversation. <laughs> and, and luckily, that, luckily, she's elsewhere with the children. But yes, no, oh, we uh, six six months ago we welcome we, we doubled the the number of people living in this house. So uh, it's pretty good. You know, we'll talk later. We'll talk later about it. Practically raises itself. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yeah, again, that's what they say. Considering, considering that considering that they're born a minute apart, I hope that she catches up real fast. <laughs> oh. Patrick, it's great to get you on. Really, yeah, really happy to have you here tonight. And uh, you went, you went, you uh, jumped through fiery hoops to make this camera setup work because you had it set up in the no, other room. I, so I, I appreciate just, your effort from the kitchen where my family will need to eat to hear and preserve. <laughs> harmony <laughs> right on house well it's good i and yeah we we can all understand and respect having harmony in the household so uh it's great to have you on we've got some news to talk about uh starting with victor and the news bumper the thing that causes harmony in my house is when i activate android news oh android news is activated what is the hot word for activating android news i don't know uh, it's the old timey voice. Oh, oh, it's not a hot word. It's just like a, a twang. Just a tone. A tone. It's more of an accent. More of an accent. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's the future. Uh, Android Q Beta 5. We talked last week that it was, uh, that there was like a leaked version of it that XDA had their hands on. It's now officially launched. I think it happened a day later, which is usually how it goes. Uh, a couple of things of note. There's an assistant swipe now. Actually, I can show it. Let me see here. Let me show off my phone here. So, uh, more tweaks around the gestures. So you still got the long pill down there, but if you swipe in from the corners, you'll see this little, well, if you swipe in from the corner, you get the assistant pop-up and you can kind of see little handles that appear there every once in a while. Of course, it's not doing it right there to kind of give you that hint. So if you aren't, you know, uh, waking assistant with your voice or squeezing for assistant or, you know, the 5 million other ways, how, how you get to assistant on your phone. Now you can swipe from the corner and bring up assistance, so that's great. But the downside of these changes is actually something that I'm really curious to kind of see how this 
how this uh, how this plays out. Google announced that Q's gesture navigation will not work with third party home screens, at least at launch. Uh, so, you know, a friend of the show, uh, Chris Lacey wrote about this. Of course, he creates the action launcher. Um, home screen launcher. And, you know, I imagine other launcher creators are kind of bummed about this, right? Like if, if you have a third party launcher that you're going to install on an Android Q device, at least at launch, once it's out, um, you're not going to be able to use the gestures. It's going to opt. It's going to default to the three button layout that Google seems to be saying is the past, not the future. <laughs> I think it's safe to say begun these launcher wars have ha have have <laughs> I screwed it up. <laughs> That's okay. It was begun a noble these attempt. launcher wars have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, this this is a shot across the bow. This is this is uh this is Google. I mean we talked about how, you know, Google takes some of the best functionality that other third party developers put in things like launchers and other apps and adds it into the OS. And now here's something that that a lot of users like to use that say, no, no, you need hours like you need to use, only use hours. And that's uh, that's that's a scary precedent, I think. Yeah. But, you know, this isn't like the end of the road as far as this is concerned. Uh, Google is committed to making this work. Uh, Chris Lacey even points out in his write up that the Android team intends to make gesture navigation compatible with third party launchers later this year. Um, so it'll happen eventually kind of seems from the tone of, of Chris's write up that he's not completely alarmed, but you know, he was alarmed when he first heard about this. So the sky is not necessarily falling. Uh, Patrick, have you, when, when now that, now that Google is doing this kind of like public beta thing on Android, do you run the risk of installing it and playing with it and living with it? Or do you just wait for everything <laughs> to iron itself out? Because it is kind of a roller coaster to be honest. Well, I, the the first thing I want to say is is the idea of of sucking up third party things into the main operating system is so Apple. Um, you know, I, I can remember like System Seven dot whatever and moving over and and really cool shareware apps, some which were working to chair support charities. Uh, Apple just being like, that is a great idea, and you've been nurturing that app for several years now, and now it's Blink. part of the operating system. Thank yeah. You. Um, yep. So it's 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 not like it's a, a new thing. It certainly happened on on lots and lots of different areas app wise. Um, you know, I was laughing because I was I, I I was so excited part of Julie about being on the show because this morning I found out there's a system update available so I can finally get Pi mm -hmm. uh, on my Motorola G6. Oh, so welcome it, to Pi. It, welcome to yeah, the last well, year. <laughs> at, yeah, at this point I'll be really excited if Pi runs stable and then. Maybe I'll be thinking about running some, you know, betas, yeah, <laughs> developer yeah. editions, <laughs> uh, because you know there are so many minor gripes I have with this phone uh, in terms of the operating system. Uh, I, I'm not feeling super adventurous about getting a layer of abstraction. You know, if I was running a Pixel or a Samsung, I'd probably be a little more experiment, uh, experimenty, a little more prone to experiment with the operating systems. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Um, it is a little alarming to me that Google is still so tweaking the gesture um, navigation this far into the beta schedule. Like there's basically one more release and then it's the final release. Yet every single time it seems like they're making these big changes to but the gesture navigation, which is supposedly like what they're committed to doing. Yet we're this late and things are still changing. But maybe that's but just I'm how it goes. We normally don't have access to it. You know? No, I'm not surprised though, Jason, because I feel like since ever since Q first dev release came out, I feel like the one through line in talking about this beta has been the gesture control, right? Like, wasn't there early things where it doesn't have the gesture? They're changing the gesture. It's going to move the pill. It's not going to like, I feel like there's just been a lot of chatter about the gesture control. Yeah. And I yeah, wonder cool. how much, how much of that chatter and that feedback they're measuring and then applying or are they just trying to work the kinks out of what their plan is and moving forward? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, so much of it has been around the gestures. But, but I mean, I feel like time and time again, it never feels perfect. And I guess that's the point, right? Like <laughs> if it's not perfect, you tweak it until you get there. But this is Google we're talking about. Maybe they never get there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Google's a company that, that took 
perfectly functional and recognizable features inside of Gmail, arguably their most popular. I mean, okay, Android or Gmail. It's hard to tell which one. Probably, I guess, I mean, Android G- hits more people. Um, but, you know, they would do things like, oh, let's redesign the primary icons that define your interaction with our servers and right. let's change the icons because you let's fix something, make it difficult to find, and see whether the user base can eventually get back up to speed. Like I, I hate to sound harsh, but Google's always been I'm I'm down with experimentation with UI, but I always feel like you know, they've they vacillate between having a really clear vision, which often is something that none of the rest of the consumer base actually understands. Um, and just sort of experimenting until something kind of evolves or somebody just says, stop it, ship it, we're done. And it's hard to tell which one in some cases. Is that harsh? And, and all, I mean, uh, no, it's, no, harsh, it's harsh, but it's true. Think, it's true. Okay. And I, I think yeah. that often you get that singular vision, but with an expiration date. Right? We're like, <laughs> it's going to be like this for two years, and then we're going to mix it up and change it again because it's expired. You know, right. like we just, we need to do yeah. something to shake it up. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Google really enjoys pulling the rug out from under something that, you know, is, is perfectly you know organized. It makes a, a lot of sense. Your, your life, how you interact with devices that define your relationship to technology. That was great. We're going to do it all over again. Because <laughs> well, hey, we know... I, we know that you enjoy that- learning how to use our software, so we've given you another opportunity to relearn how you use Gmail. Isn't that well, fantastic? I, I'm pretty sure there's somebody out there who understands game theory and gamification much better than we do, and realizes that it keeps us engaged by trying to figure out the changes. Oh, yeah. And we want to. You know. No, it pisses us off. It has us thinking about going back to iOS. Yeah, there's a lot well, of people bad. that fall into that point. boat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's true. Absolutely. It's more true. and more, you know, as this stuff happens, you see more and more chatter about that. Um, um, a few other bits. Google Translate button is now going to be able to appear in the recents view. So, you know, the recents where you get all of your previous apps, kind of the multitasking view. Uh, if uh, it happens to be in another language, you'll get a little translate button that you can tap so you can translate it there. So it might be might be useful. And then XDA discovered a tasker like APK in the beta five called rules. I don't know if it's necessarily meant to replace tasker functionality, but it seems to to do a lot of that stuff, XDA actually speculates that this might be a Pixel 4 feature for device automation because Google has not really even mentioned this functionality at all yet, yet they discovered it uh, in there. So who knows if that'll be like one of those features because Google likes to save some features for the actual official release. Uh, I've noticed in the in the past mm-hmm. when they've done these betas, they want to have a little bit of a surprise for when it finally launches. Maybe this is it. Maybe it's something else. Who the heck knows? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe the surprise is that people at Google have been listening to your audio, uh, your audio recorded well, on your Google Home. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm not, I'm surprised it took this long for this to come out. But yeah. so, uh, uh, rock the headlines when a Dutch newspaper <laughs> ran a report uh, that someone leaked a cache of Google Home voice recordings. Uh, and basically, Google said uh, they confirmed this, and they said a, re- a, a reviewer violated its data security policies by leaking the audio. That's an audio reviewer, not like a press reviewer or something like that, right. one of their employees. Right. Um, Go- Google said that employees review some of the snippets to improve voice recognition, and that 0.2% of all audio is reviewed and is not associated with account data or personally identifiable data. Um, Amazon has Amazon shown to do this as well for improving Echo devices. Um, and I guess the the big question is is like Patrick, does this does this surprise you that they listen to this to to uh, to make sure that the voice recognition works well or not or like how do you feel no. like how do you f- right? <laughs> uh, I, okay, I have I have complicated feels about this one because uh, I was in a conversation recently where somebody who works at at sort of the fringes as a company where their big play is AI is kind of like well, you know, we take advantage of human intelligence and organi- and basically what it came down to is you know we use Amazon's Mechanical Turk or something similar so that a lot of poorly paid people will help teach our AI like you know what I mean that that initial right. stage of AI where you need people to teach it enough examples where it can start learning for itself and at some point I, I think some of those things actually end up working and at some point I think none of them end up actually working depending on the quality of the AI and who's implementing it and you know how they're changing it and I bring all that up because you know not too long ago somebody was like oh I'm in the EU I can access all of the history of I, I want to say my my Amazon uh, you know data that they've stored and got a giant dump truck I 
make humor here, uh, a giant collection of audio clips uh, that had belonged to somebody entirely else's account. And, Mm -hmm. you know, on one hand, you know, 0.2% of the staggering number of humans that use this service is infinitesimal, right? Uh, And, you know, the the number of people's whose audio was leaked is is probably the tiniest of tiniest of fractions of that 0.2% of the user base but if it's your audio it's sure as hell going to matter for you and then it becomes you know you'll hear people yelling and the EU will start yelling and the congress critters in the United States will start calling up the people who gave them the donation in the last election cycle and say we need a little more this year to help preserve uh you know your corporate position not that i'm feeling a little snarky about uh uh you know uh how congress (laughs) well yeah well it's it's not so much the government is but it's just there's this really odd thing i'm watching where people are like super super concerned about privacy and then they they're like oh i'll just give you all of my information in exchange for you know some stupid widget on your game that i paid for um and it it won't get rid of the ads that i thought i paid to get rid of but you know uh, it i wanted that particular whatever it is and you know mostly it's like you know how were they able to record this what was the quality of the recordings you know you know were they holding up the microphone of their phone next to the speaker um i you know people are going to people and people don't particularly care or people think that it doesn't matter or uh and that's frustrating right because you know if somebody catches you know, a snippet of a conversation I don't want to share that's, you know, embarrassing or depressing or or there could be legal action or anything else. I I just feel like it's really, you know, like one, I got to make sure the, the, the Google device, the Google home device I've been testing uh, next to my bed is unplugged because if my wife sees this article and sees that there again, uh, you know, <laughs> no, no, but, but spousal but, harmony will not be maintained. But like my but wife, you aren't Dutch, out, so you have nothing to worry about. It's okay. Oh, yes, because it only happens. It only happens. It, yeah. It happens to other people. That's fine. Yeah. No. Yes. I mean, yeah. no, but go, going back to this whole thing, like, I wasn't surprised to read this. I was just surprised that it got out because, yeah. of course, they need to test it in some way and they're going to use real sure. life data and all this sort of stuff. And, Patrick, you made the perfect point is that, like, there's a tacit understanding that's going to happen unless it's my data, you know, unless, yeah. and, uh, yeah, and You're there's no way for uptight. us to even know that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't uh, care. I mean, if you well, want to listen to me and my wife argue, argue over when we're gonna what we're gonna do when the baby's crying, go for it, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Say that now. <laughs> um, but it's also, I mean, but it's also, I mean, I've I, I know people who have like security cameras all over their house, and they're like, oh yeah, you know, it all goes to a third party, you know, and not third party name of you know company that made their cameras, you know, and I'm like, don't you feel a little uptight about that? that you know, all the video that's running of your house is is scannable sometimes. And statistically, like, you know, it's it's incredibly unlikely that somebody's going to see, you know, the video of you and your wife getting crazy in the hallway or you spanking your child or your dog, you know, pooping on your portrait of, you know, your grandmother or whatever horrible thing is going to show up on YouTube next week. Um, but you know, people don't realize that there's one, there's not a lot of security. Uh, there's not a lot of privacy in a lot of these services. In a lot of cases, it's not particularly well implemented from a secure standpoint or a, a, a sort of like, you know, if a pen tester comes and looks and pokes it with a sharp stick, it's probably going to deflate. Like it's, it's kind of alarming how poor I, you know, I think Google's doing a good job. I think Amazon's doing a good job. I think everybody else is probably uh, a little bit suspect, but yeah. You know, I'm, I, I work close enough with enough people that work full time in security that I'm probably a little amped up and perhaps tinfoil hattish by nature. Um. <laughs> well, it's it's not not a wrong place to be necessarily. You know what I mean? There, there may have been a time where thinking about that seemed like, well, what's what's going on? You know, with with your line of thinking like that's ir- irrational, whatever. Uh, time and time again, we see examples of why that's maybe not so irrational and why it is a good idea to at least consider it. I think a lot of people just don't even consider it. Uh, and then, you know, they become the 0.2 percent. Unlikely. But it can happen. And if it happens to you, like you pointed out, it's a pretty big deal. So, uh, And then uh, Qualcomm is updating Snapdragon 855, which is the processor you're going to find in all of the, you know, the last year's kind of most premium Android devices are probably running the 855 uh, if they're on the Qualcomm chip. Uh, they're upgrading it to the 855 Plus. Still very similar, obviously. This is like a... 
an incremental upgrade at the halfway point, uh, but it's getting an upgrade from 2.85 gigahertz to 2.96 gigahertz, so a little bit faster, also 15% faster uh, graphic rendering uh, with the Adreno, uh, sorry, the Adreno 640 uh, GPU update. So modest update. Uh, apparently, it's going to appear in the Asus Ro uh, Rogue. What does the Rogue stand for again? I always forget. Uh, Flow, I think, oh, is the one that that always knows this. It, uh, it was something. <laughs> it is in gaming. It's right? a gaming phone. Yeah, the the Asus yeah. Rogue Phone Two launches in, on July twenty third, and then probably the Note ten um, that launches next month. Um, I don't know, Patrick, I feel like this is maybe more your forte. This is like what you guys talk about on this week in computer <laughs> hardware, but, uh, what, what do you think about this? Eh, at eh. this point, I think most, I, 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 I hate to be underwhelmed, but at this point, I think there's so many arm processors coming in so many different directions and so few of us actually need, uh, even most of the performance of the mid level. Uh, I, I just want, you know, I want six gigs of RAM in my phone so that I no longer have to think when I'm switching between apps. Yeah, fair um, enough. That's kind of like my big goal at this point. Uh, you know, it was it was interesting because I, I was looking at some, um, uh, uh, I cannot talk about any of that, but I was looking at some <laughs> consumer tablets that will be coming out later this year. Uh and it was frustrating because they were trying to hit a price point and, you know, they put like one gigabyte of memory in it, uh, which is typical for the target market they're going for. But it's like it's going to definitely load something. And then when you go eventually. to shift to another app, yep. yeah, you know, it'll basically have to clean everything out of memory and load everything out of uh. storage. And yeah, that literally. And I again, I get why they did it. They're going for a price point. They want to have profit. Um, but you know, uh, it's so frustrating as the kind of delta at this point between the expense, like if the amount of RAM in the expensive phones and the amount of RAM in the cheap phones gets larger and larger. I feel that for a lot of applications, they may be getting a little looser and looser with the amount of memory they use. That may be a complete fantasy of me projecting on why I need to justify buying a more expensive phone with more RAM. Um, but for me, I just want to see more phones with more RAM, not like 12 or 16 gigabytes, but more, you know, more relatively inexpensive phones with like six gigabytes of RAM yeah. uh, just to make switching between applications seamless and fast. Um, to me at this point, you know, unless you're doing some crazy video editing uh, or some really crazed gaming on, on your Android phone uh, or your iOS device for that matter, most of them have way more processing power than people use with the apps they run. It's just um, a, a deficiency in the amount of memory on there that really kind of rears its ugly head. Well, and, and yeah. you know, we, we're starting to see these phones that are coming out with like 12 gigs of, rem of, of memory. Right. And, you know, part of me wants to be like, what the heck would you, I mean, of course I'll take a phone with 12 gigs of ooh, memory. I will ooh, always take ooh, a device ooh. with more memory, but why, why is that necessary? And so apparently it's very prices, necessary. It's not necessary in most cases. Okay. Like once you get somewhere around eight gigabytes, there's like almost no return at this point with the applications people run. What there is, however, is an ongoing battle in mainland China. Uh, remember remember the megahertz wars where people yeah. would put like the megahertz on the side of the PC box? <laughs> yes. Um, and even long after there was very little correlation between the speed of the processor and the amount of work it would get done, uh, where a, you know, a slower processor, i.e. one with a lower megahertz number, might be considerably faster than one with a higher megahertz number, um, there is this battle in mainland China because a uh, uh, Somebody I know who works on the PC side of things a couple of years ago was like, hey, if you need memory, don't wait because it's not going to get cheaper again for a mm -hmm. while. And this is about, I want to say about two years ago as memory prices are starting to go up. And he's like, basically, there's huge battles in the Chinese cell phone market, which turns over cell phones faster than our market. And one of the big things that drives people is they're, they're putting eight, they're putting 12, they're putting 114,000 gigabytes of RAM in phones. And that actually, until more resources came online to make more memory. That was actually a large part of the reason why system memory for, for PCs and laptops just kept climbing through the ceiling compared to where it was. Um, and then Samsung brought on, I think they finally got the fab. Like they literally were bringing a fab online that was going to be equivalent to 25% of the existing uh, memory production capacity <laughs> in the world. Wow. So wow. yeah, I think they were tired of, of RAM prices, which makes no sense, uh, given that they sell RAM, but apparently made a lot of sense to them. But they're literally, they're literally, it, it was a huge marketing battle, um, in mainland China that was driving the ridiculous, uh, 
RAM numbers on phones. Yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm sure we're going to see some ridiculous RAM numbers on the Note 10 <laughs> as that comes out next next month. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of RAM jammed into that one. Uh, um, same, same real quickly course. before we move on, ROG is Republic of Gaming. There we go. Yeah, it was so right on Thanks the tip Thanks everyone of my in the chat, chat room who found it at the same time as I Googled it. But there you go. The Asus ROG, Republic of Gaming. All right. Thank so, you. There you go. <laughs> All right. Ron, you all got right. the email. Yeah, let's do an email. Uh, all right. This email comes in from Ken who says, I kept expecting Ron to say that he has seen the phones used in the sci-fi series Earth Final Conflict. They were a roll-up phone that ran on a system that if you needed to really crunch through a program, you could buy processing time and power to help things along. I know when the show originally ran, this is where I thought things were going. Check it out. I know it's available to stream for a few different places a few months ago. On Roku was one of them. And this is an image of the phones from Earth Final Conflict. I'll be honest, and Patrick knows this as well, and so does Jason. I'm a big fan of science fiction. I have not watched Earth Final Conflict, but I sure like the look of these phones, uh, at least at the time it came out. Uh, Patrick, last week we were looking at the uh, rumored prototype of a rollable display that would be a little cylinder and the phone screen, the display would roll right. out from it. Um, and uh, we we're talking about, you know, I, did you watch The Expanse on Sci Fi? Or yeah, I was like, Amazon? didn't we just see that on a science fiction show recently where everybody well, was like watching their phones? Um, yeah, well, yeah, they've got they've got the single pane of glass that projects light in some way and goes beyond the piece of glass or whatever. But the rollable <laughs> phone is, uh, you know, apparently was speculated here on Earth Final Conflict. So that's worth checking out. I love the future of phones. Patrick, what do you think of rollable phone of the foldable <sighs> phones and rollable and all this sort of stuff? Do you think it's ever going to take off? I, I, okay, the, the the foldable phones I've seen uh, have underwhelmed me because of the issues with the hinge, and yep. that leaves you know there's this sort of the dimples. derp in the yep. center. Yeah, the dimple <laughs> in the center of the screen. Um, I find that frustrating, and for the prices they're charging, I find it completely unacceptable. Yes, uh, and yep. you guys have seen me in real life, so you know that for me to make an issue, like mm -hmm. you've seen my truck, um, you know, for me to make an issue with something aesthetic <laughs> means it must be really irritating. Um, the rollable phones kind of fast fascinate me because the idea of like I have a something that looks like a pen in my pocket and I pull it out and I, I watch a screen um, that that idea like I just I love that uh, I mean I literally okay. spent 30 40 minutes at CES this year just watching uh, LG's uh, you know rolling TV because it was just so fascinating to watch it roll out and roll in um, so obviously I'm easily entertained but I, I want to see the aesthetics and I want to see something that actually, my problem is, is, you know, I, I want something that's going to be sort of rigid when it opens up right. and isn't going to be all sort of like, you know, a rolled up scroll thing, you know, what's acceptable at the margins of a, a 100 inch projection screen uh, when you're watching a movie is going to be really, really irritating on something that's eight or 10 inches uh, in front of you. Um, I also think it's going to be an incredibly long time before we have anything remotely durable enough to be sort of. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't oh, want to. Totally. I don't want to think about that. That that means thinking realistically. But I, but oh. I very much I'm, <laughs> I'm with you that I, I want it to roll out and snap and then be rigid. And what I want to see is I want to see actually what the interaction looks like. Like what is the you know what is the haptic feedback if if anything what is the uh, you know kind of the the responsiveness to your finger and as you're using it because up to now we've just seen the concept of the screen green fault you know rolling in and out i haven't seen it in use so um i don't know i mean the i just want is, diff what, different phones what we all really want is the jack in the back of your neck like a william gibson novel so you yeah. slot the you know the latest phone module into there you know and everything's all visual and printed on the back of your cortex as if it was actually you know in front of you and when you get a virus your entire system's going to shut down and you'll stop breathing but yeah, everyone wants that I can, I, I mean, you want to get sci-fi, man. It's all about eliminating the phone, eliminating the yes. rolling screen, and having it show up inside of your skull because you are directly connected to the internet via, you know. Yes. Well, I, I can We're living spot. the internet at that point. <laughs> I can re recommend everyone to uh, read the new Neil Stevenson novel, Fall or Dodge in Hell, uh, where very subtly he, he he embeds in the concept of a uh, AR kind of visor that everyone uses in the future that not only can you see data and information, but also blocks your identity from anyone looking at you, which is an interesting angle, which we haven't read in, in, um, in science fiction yet. So check out the new Neil Stevenson novel. I'm about 600 pages in. It's fascinating. Right so. on. Awesome. All right, let's take a break. 
Thank the sponsor, and then we'll get into some other hardware. Oh, nice, Patrick. I said <laughs> Patrick has the book right oh, there. Oh, that was it. Great. That was it. <laughs> He's reading it right now. Uh, I read it like three days after it came out. <laughs> oh, so good. All right. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Uh, you want to read something interesting, read your will when you get it done with LegalZoom. That's interesting. Uh, I did that years ago before I even worked at Twit. It was a super easy process getting it done through LegalZoom. And it just feels good to have it done, even though it wasn't, it's it's kind of a challenge to like approach your own mortality and, and think through some of those things. But really, uh, really good process through LegalZoom doing that. Um, but that's that's not all that, that LegalZoom is all about. Becoming a, sex, a successful business owner doesn't just happen. It takes hard work. It takes resources, maybe a little bit of luck as well along the way. Uh, and for business owners, one of the best resources to help you run your business is LegalZoom. So yes, they're great at you know helping you construct your will, but they're also great at a number of other things directly related with your business. LegalZoom was created 18 years ago to help you confidently get past the hurdles that come uh, with owning a business. Since then, over 2 million people have trusted LegalZoom to help start or run their businesses. Whether you have questions about incorporating or forming an LLC, maybe you need tax advice, uh, contracts to be reviewed, information on trademarks, they have a ne network of independent attorneys and professionals that can provide you the guidance that you need. And the best part is you're not going to be charged by the hour like you would if you, uh, <laughs> if you went with a law firm. LegalZoom is not a law firm. Uh, they just put you in touch with the trusted people that know what they're talking about. Let LegalZoom help you with your small business worries so you can focus on what you do best. Visit LegalZoom.com now and get special savings when you enter AAA at checkout. That's LegalZoom.com. Make sure and enter AAA for special savings. Uh, one more time, that's LegalZoom.com. Enter AAA at checkout. And LegalZoom is awesome. Check it out for yourself. It's where life meets legal. And... We kind of talked a little bit about hardware with email before, but let's talk about it some more in hardware. We've got other things to talk about. I got to say, I, I love when a topic comes up on the show and weird? then immediately we get an answer a week later. It is so weird. So last week yeah. we were we were talking, uh, reminiscing, as it were, about the fabled JBL link bar that was shown at uh, Google I.O. not this year, but the year before and touted with much praise. It was like, oh, everybody wanted to get the, the first sound bar that had Android TV embedded into it. And then we waited and then it was delayed. And then we waited some more and it was delayed, blah, 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 blah. Well, so we mentioned it last week on the show. <laughs> what do you know? Like a few days later, the JBL link bar is finally available for purchase. I'm convinced that JBL watches the show and, they, and we were their motivation. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. that's the that's the only answer. That's the only that's the only it's reasonable the, conclusion yeah, to make. The only logical. Uh, so conclusion. someone at JBL watches the show and was like, "We haven't released that yet." Yeah, they were like, <laughs> like, like yeah. it was a phone. spit take. They were and drinking a guy water in a warehouse with just like boxes of of sound bars and just like, oh, did you oh, want to sell that? Oh, I forgot to hit the button. <laughs> it's sold. Yes, yeah, being sold now. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. so if you want one, you can go to JBL or a number of other fine you know, places for buying technology and get the three hundred ninety nine dollar ninety five JBL Link Bar, so that you can say you have the first sound bar that has Android TV and Google Assistant built into it. So even when it's off, it's still a Farfield microphone embedded into it, and it acts as an assistant point. Uh, so it's like a Google Home. So. So, so this is great. It's great that we have Patrick on because yes. I want to say maybe. Oh, what year is it? 2019. So I want to say maybe 11 or 12 years ago, Patrick, you told me mm -hmm. once never to buy a TV with any stuff, any software on it. Just buy a dumb monitor and plug things into it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still of that opinion, but now you <laughs> cannot buy any yeah. dumb. There are fundamentally no dumb monitors. So I, I got yep. you a, a really funny argument with Robert Heron from AVXL, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. And I was like, just stop. Just stop even mentioning the software that's on the television because what we always end up doing is telling people like buy an Apple TV, buy a Roku, buy an Android TV device, just 
plug it into an HDMI port and ignore everything that came from the factory on the on yeah. the television because invariably, no matter what they do, if it's not a Roku TV, the Roku TVs are actually really, really good. Almost everything else gets limited sort of support and just sort of becomes useless after a year or two, even on the incredibly expensive televisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, same advice, different way of channeling it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so glad that it's the same advice, and I agree with you. Between the horrible UI and then the lack of updates and like things like, things right. like that, but do you feel that a uh, Android TV Google Assistant soundbar combo is an acceptable thing to plug into a monitor? Like, is this something that you actually would consider? I would be curious to see how they implement certain aspects and what happens. Um, you know, uh, let, let me test it and I'll get back to you um, because it, it, <laughs> it, it's frustrating because the way some of these are implemented, I guess the question for me is, and I don't have the answer off the top of my head, um, you know, will it still be useful if I don't want to use Android TV anymore? And if it is, great. And if it's right, not. So, so does it function as a sound bar alone? And you don't you just don't plug in the HDMI cable or the or the video cable to use all the other stuff. Mm. Yeah, and that's not to say anything against Android TV or the JBL device. Just I get nervous about some of the some of the combiny stuff to mm -hmm. to use a highly technical marketing term. Um, you know, it's it's great uh, as soon as you get into the sort of you know the, the, the within a certain window it can be fantastic, much like that operating system on your new television. Uh, and when you get outside of that, things get kind of ew. Okay, so it's got a Chromecast built in. It's got 4K HDMI inputs. Um, it looks on paper. It looks like a very compelling device. Yes, I would like to hear it. Yeah, yeah I would like to hear I, it too. It has that subwoofer JBL, built into it. JBL does a lot of nice engineering, and and some of their studio monitors um, are ridiculously good for the money. Um, and you know, they're part of Harman Kardon. Harman Kardon got bought by Samsung. It's part of a. It's a. It's a really huge company, and and most of actually what they do is is designing for third parties. There's a lot of amazing stuff from JBL. They own Ravel, uh, which makes some of the best speakers anybody makes. Mm -hmm. um, some of the JPL stuff blows me away. Some of the JPL stuff doesn't. I really would like to kind of hear it on a case by case basis. So. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I'm curious well, to hear this. I hope that we can get one uh, in in studio to get get some sort of a review on it. Well, whomever that works at JBL that's watching, yeah. please send us a review unit. I mean, that's that's the next. <laughs> that's, natural yeah, thing because here, obviously so. they're watching or listening. So yeah, clearly. yeah, that should be so, pretty easy. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, things to stick into your TV. Um, last week, we also talked about uh, the Android TV dongle that we saw from Google uh, in an FCC filing or FCC review that ne that was only for dev use. It was never for actually uh, consumer products. Um, and once again, we wish for something, and then and then it, and then the, the the magic of the world delivers. Uh, <laughs> Sling just released a product that basically is this. Um, it is a uh, it's called the Air TV Mini HDMI dongle, and it comes with a Bluetooth re a remote. And it's a little dongle that goes into your TV via HDMI, and it's got buttons for Sling, Netflix, Google Assistant, and a home button that takes you to Android TV. Um, and it comes with 2 gig of RAM, 8 gig of storage for DVR, and you can get this for just $80, and that includes a $25 Sling credit. Uh, hmm. So if you're looking for a HDMI dongle that's running an Android TV, your, your search is over. That's kind of compelling. Like, yeah, that's a tight little unit. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip that. But uh, I, <laughs> I have, I have a bizarre um, brand negative affinity. I don't like Sling. Oh, really? Yeah. What I don't do you know not why. like about Sling? Eh, I just feel like it was a really great product, and now it's not, or, uh, or it's a different offering. I'm just not. I know a lot of people are subscribed to Sling's TV service, and you know, and and use it and like it. But for some reason, I like I'm like, oh, this is great. I just wish it didn't have Sling on it, or I didn't get a Sling credit. Like, just give me and pure Android TV, no other uh, bells and whistles. Yeah. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes looking at the the remotes that have the big button with the service yeah. on it. For Hacky. whatever reason, that's a turnoff for me. Even though, Hacky. even though if it has a Netflix button, like I use Netflix all the time, you'd think that I would be okay with that. But for whatever reason, I look at the remote and I see the big Netflix button or whatever. It's tacky, right? Yeah, Am I? I mean, yeah I, yeah. I don't know. I just I don't like it. It's <laughs> co-marketing dollars, and it helped make that more affordable yeah, or it okay. made yeah, that's, more that's, money. That's how they got to eighty to an eight dollar price point, right? Like it's yeah, subsidized I, by Netflix. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember what it was that showed up as, as a particularly large button on a remote we looked at several years ago. And I laughed because I was like, who is this? And a couple of years later, the, the service kind of like floated and apparently spent all of its venture capital on putting big buttons on remotes <laughs> and then disappeared. <laughs> and I remember like thinking about that and, you know, being like, well, that was just worthless, you know? And of course you couldn't remap the button. Right. Exactly. But, you know, you, you had this button for like a service you never heard of right there on the remote. And it's forever um, embedded on the on the remote. Yeah, and I don't think anybody used exist. the remote for that particular piece of hardware for very long, but All right. you know. The dream was magnificent for several minutes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much potential. So much potential. Uh, and then uh, finally, some some leaks because we're we're getting close to the Note 10, and we keep hearing about the Pixel 4. So first, the Note 10, uh, the press images have leaked, courtesy of Win Future, uh, complete with you know everything that we're kind of expecting out of the Note 10: a centered camera hole in the front display, nearly bezel-less, and of course it has the the S Pen propped up nicely along the side and kind of you know it looks like a, another note i mean i'm no reason not to be excited about this if you are a note fan um <laughs> well that's like cropping it in strange ways but uh <laughs> anyways you aren't gonna have to wait long to find out about the note 10 but there you go that's a good kind of front shot of the the whole punch um which i don't mind the whole punch i know some people hate it but i, th I think it looks all right it's small enough um, so we'll find out about that next month. The event is August 7th. Sam Mobile also says that the 5G version is going to come in 256, 512, and one terabyte storage options uh, for all of that media that you're storing on your phone. Oh, man, one hey, terabyte. I store media on my phone. <laughs> one terabyte's worth? <laughs> one terabyte's worth? I have, a, I have a 400 gigabyte SD card in this phone. Okay. Uh, one of the reasons I don't have a Google Pixel 3a uh, is because it doesn't have a micro SD card slot. And right. I literally have over 200 gigabytes of media on this. Okay. Now, do you like, do you enjoy the fact that you have it on a, a medium that is removable because if, versus putting it onto the device itself? Well, one in in the price category where I shop, uh, they almost never have decent memory capacity. Right. No, that's uh, true. Fair it, enough. It's thirty two or sixty four gigabytes. Like you know, maybe someday I'll buy a flagship phone again. But uh, you know, the the flagship phones I've found most compelling have often had no micro SD card slots. Yep. yep. Uh, and you know, uh, we'll see. <laughs> sure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then I, like I mentioned the Pixel 4. It's cropping up in places again. It's always hard to know whether this was meant to happen or whether it was a true accident. But there's another shot of a Pixel 4 out in the wild with a case on it that looks kind of like Google's fabric -y case, sort of. It's, uh, it's done in a way that really hides the uh, camera bump. It, you see the camera array, but the case, you know, doesn't, doesn't show that the bump exists necessarily. So it's kind of a flush back sort of thing. Kind of looks a little funky. But That's weird. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. Yeah, it's a little weird. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. That doesn't feel you know, like good. The bump, Jason. We'll just make it really thick. Of course, we could have made yeah. the whole phone really thick and given you more battery life, but we're about thick. Yeah, I know. Right. They never do that. Why don't they ever do that? We're going to give you different I, size hole, circle holes in the back of your phone. <laughs> it doesn't look like it doesn't look balanced. Yeah. It looks like something right? in the background of a scene in, in Star Wars. Yes. <laughs> like there should be Jawas <laughs> yes. running up to wrenches. Oh, um, totally <laughs> nailed it. That's awesome. Uh, oh, man. Who knows how long we have to wait to actually see the, the Pixel 4, but man, we know a lot about it. And part of that is because Google has acknowledged as much. Uh, with their kind of confirmation of one of the, the leaks a month or so ago. So yep. <laughs> we will find out about that as um, like sands through the hourglass. These are the days. Of <laughs> well, so do you think, do you think given, given that we've got this, you know, not, go back to the Google Pixel 4, given that we've got these leaks that they acknowledge that it exists. I mean, do you, do you, ex Jason, you expect an announcement in the fall, right? Like in September, October timeframe. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of wondering if they're gonna they're gonna bump it up a little bit than than what they've normally bump, been huh. doing. I see what you did there. They're gonna bump it up a little bit, <laughs> like the camera bump. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'll I'll take credit for that. 
so you think they're gonna go? You think they're gonna go sooner? I, like it, it's I don't July sixteenth. You I, think? I, you know? My my gut tells me that they might go a little sooner than than they have been. Um, going sometime in October, nearish November, seems like a long way away from their confirmation of the official design of the back of the phone. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Something tells me that they're going to announce it sooner, and maybe it would behoove them to do that uh, just based on the timing of devices releasing before Christmas and all this kind of stuff. Maybe that gives them more time to like build up a little bit more energy behind it. All right, so here's the deal, though. The Pixel 3 was announced on October 9th, 2018, right? And then the Pixel 3a uh, gets announced on May 7th, 2019. You really think we're going to Pixel 4 less than a year after the Pixel 3? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. Uh, but then Google How did... are Pixel 3 so sales? Not, 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 good. not great, Bob. Not good. I smell a Pixel yeah. Four. Yeah, right. <laughs> but, but 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 how but how have Pixel Three A sales been? Well, I, think, I don't know how those sales have been. Yeah, that, I, but that's been that's been received really positively. It has been received pretty positively, and yeah. I imagine they're probably doing pretty good for anyone who was considering getting a Pixel because everybody kind of came out after the Three A and said, "Why would you even get the Three when the Three A is, you know, gives you many of the the great things yeah. about the Three? Uh, what anyways, the for half the price? Lower? I don't care." The camera is just as good. I care. Right. If they just put a micro SD card slot in it. Yeah. Oh, wait. Did, did it have a headphone jack? Uh, yes, oh. the 3A had a headphone jack. It did. has has yeah. a headphone jack. So they <laughs> almost got there. half as much. Costs, yeah. what, 60% less? Gives you most of the goodness? Yeah, I'm telling you, the 3A is a great phone. I, I, I stuck with it for much longer than I normally would after reviewing a phone because there was no real reason for me to switch back. I was completely convinced that I was on the same phone. So, uh, so it's a good, it's a good phone. So I, I'm just saying, I, I'm, I don't know where I'm pulling it from, but I kind of just have a feeling that they might do it a little bit earlier. I have a lot of feelings on this show and most of them don't pan out. So don't listen to me. <laughs> and I just like, to, I just like to throw stuff against the wall and see what happens. And then when it, when it <laughs> works out, then I feel out. really smart. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about some apps up next. Sorry, I didn't give you much prep, uh, preparation for that. <laughs> you always right, do well, get there, Victor. Yeah, good job, Victor. Good job. Um, well, when Google's not busy, you know, releasing new phones, they're releasing new uh, social networks. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to, to earlier in the conversation, how everything at Google seems to have an expiration date and then come back sooner or later. Um, Google just couldn't resist the temptation to release another social network. Uh, this time it's called Shoelace. Uh, it's currently it's a, a, a location based social network. Currently right now it's only available in New York City. Um, it is invite only. And the concept is that it's a hyper local service for meeting up with people uh, for events. Uh, and this is actually spitting out uh, as a product of Area 120 at Google, which is a kind of incubation kind of group. Um, and those of you who might have long memories might remember uh, Google did another app back in 2011 called Schemer uh, that did this, that helped to kind of uh, plan events and things like that, local-based <laughs> things. And that, that was closed down in 2014. Here we are five years later, 2019, Shoelace. Um, given that it is NYC-based, I signed up for the beta. I have not got an invite code yet. Uh, but when I do, if I do, I will take a look at it and see if, uh, if someone like this woman in this, in the, in the photo is available to hang out. Um, but <laughs> maybe Sarah wants to go to go somewhere and do something. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe she's, she's part of your few, crew. She's looking for a few people to do yoga in Prospect Park. And actually my wife would do yoga. So maybe that's how so they, they keep friends. So there you go. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't know. It's kind of interesting because like the, these, like introducing a social network, especially a local base one, like what is, what is the expectation for this? Is this expected to grow and actually become a product that exists? Or is this something that they're going to get data about how, pe how people interact locally and then roll this into Google maps or some, or, or local guides it's, or something that already exists. That's a good question. You know? Yeah. That yeah. second one makes more sense, but it, it, you know, is this the guy that bought dodgeball just to snuff it? You know, is going back to missing dodgeball again. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't know. I've also literally just opened up killedbygoogle.com. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's that's, that's a fun so one. Good. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm like, how many how many social networks has Google? Ah, uh, uh, Orchid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Orchid comes to mind, and and I, I I've I've I don't know. I find it frustrating. Like it, it seems like they 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 keep wanting to do something like this, and it keeps being a wicked rip in pain that never quite works out the way they expect it to. And I just don't understand why they keep doing this. Um, yeah. Wanting more user data actually kind of makes sense to me. Um, you know, cause I will say, I love the sort of, you know, most active hours charts they have for a lot of stores and, and mm -hmm. areas. Um, That's so, you know, if it, yeah, if it made that data more useful, but you know, the likelihood of me signing up for another social network at this point is probably undetectable without the use of scientific instruments. And if it's <laughs> from Google, then it's even less likely than yeah. that at this point. Because why would I invest yeah. the time to do something, you know, to 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 go through all the onerous sort of like, I'm on part of a new social platform <sighs> and, and, you know, that just, just sounds as exhausting, as, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and knowing it's got a slim chance of survival uh, it's either going to get popular and then they'll kill it like, Oh look, hangouts on air. Um, or it's <laughs> going to, you know, just be a pain in the ass and never have any traction outside of Brazil. Yeah. Um, it's, Good point. it's, it's <laughs> not going to get so popular. doing a, doing it's a quick search happen. on killed by Google for the word social network. I can see that there have been eight projects that Google has launched and then killed over the years. So eight. So this is the ninth social network now that they are, uh, rolling out. Uh, Google, so, and, Google and in plus, there, and in there, Oh, sorry. And in their defense, in their defense, they some of these were acquisitions, so it's not like they created it and then killed it. They just bought it and killed it. Yeah, Google Plus, <laughs> Orkut. What else here? Wildfire Interactive, which is a social marketing application. A uh, Google Currents uh, <laughs> was a social magazine. What, app? Facebook isn't a social marketing application. S oh wait, it's a social advertising application. Sorry. Slide <laughs> photo sharing software for social networking services. Uh, <laughs> Google Friend Connect was Friend Connect, man. Oh, that was a social networking site from 2008 to 2012. Google Buzz, Jaiku, Remember Buzz. Oh, is Wave on here? Wave's got to be on here. Wave. Right? Yeah, I was going to say where's Wave? Yeah. yeah, Buzz. Yeah, oh Google my goodness, Wave, Buzz. Yeah. Well, Wave is that Wave is listed as an online communication and collaborative real-time editor tool. So there you go. Um, uh, Google Buzz. Dodgeball. Yeah, Dodgeball. Man, I love that the fir the first product killed was Google Desk Bar. Do you remember the Desk Bar? That was awesome. No, no. And anyway, <laughs> it was a it was a toolbar that that went into your browser. That was um it was a small uh, Google Desk Bar was a small inset window on the Windows toolbar and allowed users to perform searches without leaving the desktop. I remember when I <laughs> oh, saw that. that. Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. The t the toolbar craze of the early 2000s. Yeah, I remember wow. well. Everybody was fighting to be a part of your toolbar at that point. <laughs> Killed about 13 years ago. Yeah. Oh, rest in peace. Is that the oldest thing on the... No. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Wow. Uh. So you started suffering at the hands of Google much before most of the rest of <laughs> right, us. Right, you've got a lot oh, of yeah, practice. No, it's, been, it's been a long love affair, Patrick, let me tell you. <laughs> Love I mean, hate the, relationship. The, the number of these products that literally like I, that I loved, like Grand Central. Yeah. But that, admittedly, that became Voice, but Grand Central was so yeah. cool, you know. And yeah, uh, some some of the stuff that. is so good. Yeah, yeah, it's a great site. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully Google doesn't decide to kill Google Translate, which it's you know, hey, anything's possible at this point. <sighs> I feel like they're getting so much good information out of that that yeah. will run. That will run until they don't need the AI to run it, but then that makes no sense. Then they'll start charging. Like I, I feel like they're getting too much really, really interesting, useful information at a very, very deep level yeah. to want to touch that. Yeah, um, I mean, this is this is a crazy app when you think about what it's capable of doing. It really, it's just one of those examples of like this feels like the future. Google Translate is getting a new right. update. In this case, it can now auto detect the appropriate language using. Uh, the camera. So if you come up upon uh, come upon a sign, it's in a language you don't know and you can't recognize. So you can't automatically go to your app and say this is in this language or whatever. You can point the camera at it. It will detect what the language is and then automatically uh, translate that into your own language. Uh, which, <laughs> you know, once again, really really handy and useful if you if yeah. you happen to be traveling. Um, <laughs> Great if you're on an episode of Lost. Great right. if you pick up the wrong uh, driver's license uh, study guide in the state of California. Because I think it's in 17 languages now. 
It's like, oh. Oh, <laughs> finally. Korea, then I have to study for the test. Finally, I can learn how to drive. <laughs> uh, apparently, 88 languages now supported. Um, That's insane. Yeah, I know. It's just such a, such a great app. I, I have very few opportunities to use it, but I love that it exists and I love the way that it does this automatic translation where you point it at a sign yeah. and it's like it matches the font and everything looks good, but it just changes the words and it's just magic, magical. Uh, and it's also getting more accurate, of course. I bet every release they probably say that. And it's even more accurate than before, which would be true. All right, Ron, you got the last one. Yes, sir. So this is one that's near and dear, close to my heart. A few months ago, uh, Amazon announced that it was going to play nice with Google Chromecast and that their Amazon Prime Video app was going to support Chromecast. Uh, and I've been waiting patiently and then finally got the app update. And now you can watch Amazon Prime Video on your Chromecast device on a television. Oh. You don't need an Amazon Fire Stick or a Blu-ray player like I've been using with uh, the Amazon uh, app in there. I can now use the Prime Video app on my Android phone and Chromecast it out. Nice. Yay for nice. big companies playing playing nice together. Long national nightmare is over. Finally. Finally. Took a so, while. Well, I just wanted to, I wanted to <laughs> highlight that because I feel like that was a, it's a major moment in television watching, I feel. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was it was a years long of uh, I don't know spat. Wait. <laughs> I don't know what that what it was, but it was like I don't like you, Google. I don't like you, Amazon. It was like they were they were oh. kind of slapping each other's hands, and finally they're like, oh, oh actually, <laughs> yes, actually, wait a minute, maybe it benefits us to actually do this. Okay, let's let's uh, yeah. let's make true. Oh, you mean, you mean our user our users want something? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah. let's yeah. give it to them. All right. I just want I just want Audible to finally show up on the Lenovo smart clock. <laughs> <It's a> very <laughs> specific. <laughs> Don't we all? No, 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 there's lots of people that want that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, finally, we have an email from Ben Burris who says, do you know of a way to set up preferred Wi-Fi networks on my Pixel? I have a hotspot that I only want my phone to connect to if other networks are not available. The hotspot is almost always on and with me. So when I arrive at home or somewhere with Wi-Fi, I want the phone to auto switch and to know kind of like the order. First off, I think the app that you're looking for is called Wi-Fi Analyzer. Let me see. I have Wi-Fi uh, or sorry, Wi-Fi Analyzer, Wi-Fi Prioritizer. Let's see here. I think I typed it in wrong. It's Wi-Fi Prioritizer. There we go. That's it. Uh, sorry about that. Look for Wi-Fi Prioritizer in the Play Store. It has not been updated since October 2016, so it's a little out of date. No, a lot out of date at this point. So, you know, uh, your mileage may vary, let's say. But uh, so an interesting note on this. So when Pi came out, it introduced a Wi-Fi scan throttling um, feature, if you want to call it that, that ultimately diminished from what I understand, the usefulness of this app. Android Q still throttles Wi-Fi scanning uh, and before now actually required an ADB command in order to deactivate that. But uh, talk about Synergy, Android Q Beta 5 that just came out introduced a new developer option. So if you've opened up the developer options on your phone, you can find uh, you and deactivate Wi-Fi scan throttling without the required ADB command. So you can go in there, deactivate that. I'm, I, you know, I haven't tested it on Wi-Fi prioritizer um, myself to know whether that kind of opens it up and, and solves the problem uh, that, that people were experiencing, but it looks pretty positive uh, given that that feature is there. So if you don't have this yet, obviously this is just in the beta. Maybe you aren't on the beta channel. Um, you know, Q's right around the corner. And if you have the Pixel, you're going to get the update. So you've got that to look forward to. Uh, and I wish I had an answer for you for now, but that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I have because the, the outlook, you know, with Pi and it being all messed up probably kind of shoots that down until you get the update. So look for that. So Ben, thank you for writing in AAA at twit.tv. If anyone wants to write in with your questions, hopefully we can help you out. And without further delay, it's time to uh, enter the arena. So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. 
All right. So I had to pull some results from a different time because uh, people don't like fun shenanigans. 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 <laughs> uh, so I so I had to pull the the uh, the results from a little bit earlier than right before the show, and it turns out. That when I did that, launch board one with uh, 29.8% of the vote. And launch board, who was that? That was Flo. Uh, In Light, Pixel Loop was second with uh, 28% of the vote. That was Team Guest. Third place, it appeared to be Dr. Mario World at 21%. And fourth place, Easy D&D. That's yours, Ron, at 20%. Uh, the, the, the margins on this are so tight. Oh, isn't that weird? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's what we have. Hopefully, that was enough time for uh, for Wade County. Did he have any of the results, or do we even know? I don't. I don't know if Wade County is here tonight, so we might not have the results of the uh, of the, the competition. Right. Although it is say, oh, there, nope, there's there Wade County just coming in at the last minute. So <laughs> he was waiting for weeks, us to read them. <laughs> just waiting for it. Through Thank 27 you, weeks of are, of arena fun, uh, Flo is in first place with 86 points. The guests have 77 points, which is now represented by Patrick tonight. I'm in third with 56 points, and Jason, you are in last with 54 points. Yeah, so he, he made a correction, 50, 53, so I'm one last. 53. Yeah, Why did so I say that correction out loud? I should have just gone with yeah. 54. So that means <laughs> that, so that based on those results, I should go first, Patrick goes second, and you go third, Jason. All right, so I'm reordering okay. that. Oops. I just, okay, there we go. All right, Ron, I've got yours installed. Tell me about it. Cool. Yeah. So if you are like one of the many, many millions of people who use WhatsApp, um, this app will be of interest to you. Or if you use any other app, messaging app that allows people to send you voice messages, if you're like me, often you're at work, you're in meetings, you can't really listen to that voice message. Uh, this app called Voice Pop will transcribe that message to text for you in a seamless fashion, uh, which is pretty magical. Um, they've positioned the app mainly around WhatsApp because they're smart because literally millions of people use it, but it will work with other apps that use, uh, use audio in it. And here Jason's got it in front, in front of him here. Once you install it, basically all you need to do is install the app and then go into WhatsApp. And earlier I sent Jason a, uh, a voice message, um, long tap on the voice message, Jason, to bring up the menu up top and then choose share the share button. And then a voice pop should be right there. And what it will do is we'll play the audio internally and then we'll transcribe the it will transcribe the text of the message. Live demo, let's hmm. see if it happens. Yeah, it happened earlier. It's doing a lot I of swirling very, right now though. I spoke very clearly too. <laughs> I'm uh, <laughs> you did. <laughs> I'm, uh, a, I'm a little I'm a little worried. It worked earlier. Oh, What's going okay, on? We're, we're here? gonna we're gonna try that again. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Hey, Jason, it's and Ron so from All About Android, your co-host. Thanks for showing my app in the arena. I sure hope it wins. Vote for me. So now if you want to test the accuracy, you can press play on that audio and we can compare it to the text. Okay. Um, and we could hear it. Where is so, the Oh, up here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh. Hey, Jason, it's Ron from All About Android, your co-host. Thanks for showing my app <laughs> in the arena. I sure hope it wins. <laughs> Vote for me! Wow, you you <laughs> you spoke really deliberately. I did. I was just, having I really that same thought. Like, I, I've known you for a long time, and I don't think I've ever heard you speak that way. <laughs> 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 Nothing like speaking slowly, but um, what's cool is that, Jason, you actually, if we go back to the app view, um, you can see that there's a, uh, you can go into the app and you can see all the messages that were transcribed, and you can also listen to them from the app, which is pretty cool as well. So again, if you're, um, you know, like I have visual voicemail for my voicemail, which is great and transcribes my voicemail, but honestly, I get more people sending me voice messages via WhatsApp than voicemails these days, and so this transcription tool is just super neat. Having it slide into this, into the share um, menu is super convenient and it allows you to stay within the app and you're able to get messages transcribed, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, there you go. Free in the Google Play Store. Um, voice pop, transcribe voice to text for free. And there I can play your, your audio at twice the speed. Yeah. <laughs> that probably sounds more. Yeah, that sounds a little, right? sounds a little bit more natural. To be <laughs> uh, that's awesome. It's called Voice Pop, and it is free.
And you can tell yeah. your friends about Voice Pop too by clicking that button. Uh, but I won't do that. I've ar- we've already yeah. told our friends here on the show. <laughs> All right, Patrick, I have your app installed. Um, I think anyways, let me see here. Do I? <laughs> I have your other it's app installed. Windy. So give it a setup and I'm going to get it installed. Okay. I I, sorry, I had, a, I had a different one. All right, tell me about it. No, no, it's okay. I, I, uh, I am a weather nerd, uh, and I also do a lot of things that involve wanting to be aware of the weather, whether it's sailing or surfing or snowboarding and stuff like that. Um, like Dark Sky is one of my favorite apps. If you've never you know, run that, it's a fantastic hyper-local weather service. It averages all these different weather predictions and gives you what uh, you know it thinks is the most accurate version of the weather for you. So the one I'm talking about today, though, is Windy, W-I-N-D-Y. Uh, it's based on a website. And it is a uh, incredibly beautiful uh, visualizer that lets you actually, like right now, what you're looking at, that's probably the actual wind uh, offshore in the Pacific coast. And if you expand it with your fingers down on, you know, Petaluma or San Francisco, you'll see more and more local information on there. And go ahead and like s- sort of, you know, there you go. That's a big chunk of Central California, Fresno, and uh, oh, Santa that's a good Rosa. one, Santa Rosa. Come on, Petaluma. There's there Petaluma. And you can actually see like the wind speed and direction. So if you go to the the in the lower right hand corner, there's those three bars down there. And if you click on that, they'll give you uh, a whole bunch of additional options. Scroll down to where you see where it says air quality. Um, click on PM. 2.5 and then go back to the main map. And what that's going to do is do an overlay on there that should give you the information for uh, the particulate, uh, 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 basically the amount of particulate matter in the air. And if you'll see it, like right now, there's some issues like down around Baja in, uh, in Mexico. Um, but this map, uh, if you... Um, if you looked at this when the fires were burning uncontrollably in Northern California, that sort of red spot. Oh, no. You've no. gotten to a section I've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. How exciting. Yes. Um, try hitting the home button real quick. All right. Oh, I so, see. Oh. So that's. That's what, easy if you look do down it. there, if you expand into that red zone, that'll actually show you as you look across the uh, sort of guide in the bottom, like, I don't know what's going on down there. There's probably a fire down there, but there's a huge amount of particulate matter in the air there. And last summer, when Northern California was burning, a huge chunk of, of Northern and Central California was that deep, terrible color of red. Yeah. Uh, and that basically, that means it's time to not leave the house or not leave the house without a... Uh, a pretty good mask. But this is a really beautiful application. Uh, there's some other additional stuff in there. If you go down to that triple bar in the corner uh, below the home button. Um, and so like, you know, radar, lightning, uh, I particularly like waves. If you're a surfer, this is a fun one. So it gives you the uh, direction uh, and intensity of the waves. Not, uh, yeah, that's probably, I think at that point you're looking at the Gulf of Mexico, but if you scroll over to the Pacific, they should look a little bigger and more organized. Um, oh, that was the Atlantic. Oh, it's the summer. Um, <laughs> so it gives you a ton of access to a ton of information. Uh, and if you're into any of a number of sports, it can be a really, really cool tool. And also it's just kind of mesmerizing to look at wind yeah, and wave and uh, patterns and stuff. I just think it's a really, really beautiful application. So nice. Oh, look, you've got the clouds. I'm in the clouds. It's one of those things you can just play around with for a really long time. Yeah, I love the the visualization of of uh, the kind of the wind pathways and everything. That's awesome. Real quick cool. before you stop, go back to that triple bar and hit radar and lightning. You'll probably really like this one. Do it. Oh, oh, what's going on in Idaho Falls? What's going on in Pocatello? There's a storm. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. So on mine, I'm actually getting little flares of light yeah, there we go. and I haptic feedback from the phone for every time the lightning strikes. So Oh, wow. That is really cool. cool. Love yeah. it. I love the visualization uh, in this. It's awesome. It's pretty. It's nerdy. It's weather. It makes me happy. Um, <laughs> Windy.com is the website, and Windy is the app, and that is available in the Google Play Store. Nice. Right oh, it's on. free. Good pick. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, love it. All right. So speaking of visualizations, this is kind of a, a funky little little app that I just kind of lost myself for 10 minutes 
uh, using a few weeks ago. And so I want to bring it in because it reminded me, have you ever seen those, uh, those like the, I don't, I don't know what they're called, but it's like a, it's like a glass display with like sand and water on the inside. Yes. And when you flip it over, the sand kind of drips and oh yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. has a, a little bit of that effect. I'm going to see if I can reset it here. My app is called fluid simulation. There's a free version and then there's a paid version for 269 that opens up a bunch of other options. And it's meant to be kind of like a, a live wallpaper construction kit with some <laughs> really interesting kind of fluid dynamics. Um, but so I'm going to clear. No, sorry. Let's see here. Is that a Huawei wanna... tablet? Yeah, it is a Huawei tablet. <laughs> that's right. Uh, good. I mean, pretty. Yeah, it's right up there. It says Huawei. Uh, let's see here. I was trying to reset it and I can't figure that out, but whatever. So basically you can see I've got a lot of different options over here. And as I, as I touch on the display, I kind of get the effects of how it's all set up. You kind of get these like fire effects really hot around the finger and you can play with all of the dynamics here to really kind of, you know, change the intensity around that, uh, you know, a threshold. I mean, a lot of this, I'm just kind of like clicking around to, to kind of see what it does, but that's kind of the, the beauty of it. The fun of it is that you pull out the little sidebar and you just kind of start messing around and see what you come up with. And it's just really kind of satisfying. I don't know. There's something about it. It almost makes you feel like you're, you're shooting finger or, or fire out of your fingertips. Um, <laughs> but you've got all these different, all these different settings that you can kind of go through and make maybe... it pixelated, make it pixelated. Oh, Oh, what's the fridge. Ooh, that's neat. I like <laughs> pixelated. That's really cool. Maybe fringe. This is this is an app that isn't demonstrated at all on audio, by the way. <laughs> We're just going to be going ooh and ah. Uh, anyways, it's just kind of a lot of fun. There's not a whole lot to to talk about with this app other than kind of showing the the cool kind of visual effects that you can get out of it. Uh, we'll turn off colorful and see what happens. That looks pretty colorful to me. I don't I don't know why that's not colorful. Uh, vor vorticity, I, I don't know, but there it is apparently. <laughs> um, increase the frame rate. I bet. I bet the higher we get, maybe it slows down. Ooh, the, ooh that looks nice. I like that. So yeah. Anyways, you, you kind of get the gist of it. You pretty much just pull this up. The new you processor. Can, you, yeah. Right. Exactly. You can pull this up, play around with it for a little bit, uh, figure out, you know, dial it into the place that you like, and then you can set it as your wallpaper, and it turns into a live wallpaper on your uh, on your desktop. So we'll go ahead and apply that, close, we'll go home, and there we are. We've got it in the background, and it's interactive in the background as well. So once it's back there, uh, you can kind of play around with it too and get those swirly effects on your background. So it's kind of kind of simple, but uh, there's a lot of you know tweakability to it. So if you just want to kind of kill 10 minutes and create something splashy and interesting, uh, check out Fluid Simulation. Again, there's a free version, but you get more features, of course, when you pay $269 uh, to upgrade it to the pro version. And uh, you can kind of create your own style of live wallpaper on your device. So it's now time for you to vote. Twit.to slash AAA poll 429 is where you'll go. Twit.to slash AAA poll 429. Place your vote for your favorite app. Is it Voice Pop, Windy, or Fluid Simulation? Uh, when you place your vote this time, you're not going to see your results. And I'm sorry about that, Victor. But you won't see your results. We're going to have to surprise you with the results next week. And we'll see how that we're goes. Gonna see if we but can, we will we're see. Gonna see if, we're going to see if we can thwart shenanigans. Oh, yes. and Victor votes for fluid. This is what you see uh, now. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Victor voted fluid for my simulation. app. Thank you very much, Victor. I appreciate that. I'll give you my dollar bill at the end of the show. <laughs> uh, the one dollar bill that I have in, in my wallet Patrick yep. so great to get you on I think the last time you were on I was off the show I think it was you and Ron yes. and so I'm, I'm so. stoked to get the opportunity to, to bring you on when I can actually be on with you thank you for uh, I'm delighted to be sacrificing here. your evening for us for no sure. no actually I, at this point it, you know I'm sitting here getting all happy <laughs> <laughs> with fluid simulators. So, nice. Nice. You right. know, I've 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 done longer things for less reward, so I'm good. <laughs> and it's you know, it's been fun. I any reason I should delay updating the pie? Should I just as soon as I'm done with this, is it pie time? 
I'd say Go if you're it. getting the update for Pi, heck yeah. I, I don't know, yeah. know of any reason not to update to Pi. You want to be on the latest, yeah. degree, uh, you know, at least the latest uh, official release of Android. It's sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So you've got the you've got the notification waiting for you and all you have to do yes. is click it and download and go. Literally right about the time this morning when I was looking at the rundown, uh, my phone's like, blah, and I'm like, I'm trying to read the, oh, oh. I got a Pi update. <laughs> oh, <Woo>. man. <laughs> it has security updates through May. Woo. How, now, how did you end up going the rest of the day and not updating it? Uh, I have... Um, because when Severe I see that, I'm like, issues got to do it about my phone eating its own tail. Oh, uh, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> and I wait till the entire family is gathered in one place, and then and only then, when I know everyone is safe and secure, ah. and you know I'm a two block run from the police station, then I update my phone. <laughs> got it. All right, fair enough. I understand. Uh, yes, I say update. Uh, Wade County in chat says it'll be your last update on that phone, Patrick. I don't know that for sure. Wade County seems to think so. So. <laughs> I'm sure he's right. <laughs> keep keep yeah. that in mind. Patrick, you're doing so many things right now. Where do you want to point people to the work uh, that you're doing online? You know, if, if you haven't checked out uh, Sebastian Peaks, new co-host over This Week in Computer Hardware, we call it Twitch. You can find it at Twit TV uh, slash Twitch. And I've got new episodes of AV Excel starting up next week. That's uh, A-B-C-E. <laughs> I should know how to spell this. <laughs> A-B-E-X-C-E-L. Uh, which is a home theater and audio podcast to do with Robert Heron. Um, we'll be talking about some new headphones and what's going on with some of the monitors. We pretty much have all the 2019 monitors. And I also get to give a shout out as I disappear. Uh, if you're looking for a set of earbuds, uh, the microphone's not too great, but Cambridge Audio uh, did a really, really nice job with their first wireless earbud. They're like a 50-year-old British audio company, but these sound amazing for $129. Nice. And they have a nine-hour battery life and another 36 in the charging uh, case. So oh, man, I love that. Yeah. It's it's so nine nice hour. when you don't have, you know, when, when you're wireless. Like, I'm fully converted at this point. I, I resisted for years, and now... It's really hard for me to go to wired just because of the convenience of the, and the char the charging uh, case. You know, they're, you're going to dock them in there anyway, so then they're always charged up, and it's just right. such a great, great experience. I I have some high end headphones that it'll be a long ass time before there's wireless quality that's that good. But, for sure, for uh, sure. I I'm starting to anticipate being excited about those in the future. The convenience I mean, the factor is is good. At, is I was just gonna say the, ba the the price you pay and quality you get for convenience. You know, it's yep. it's that triangle, right? Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, Patrick, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, always great getting you on, and we'll have to have you back soon, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. What's uh, what's new with you? Well, considering earlier in the show, Patrick didn't know about my little family expansion. Um, I'm going to brag for a moment and remind everybody and, and update Patrick on a project I told him about a couple of years ago that finally launched publicly. Uh, our little uh, pinball device is uh, website is at scorebit.io. Um, it's where my, myself, Jay Adelson, and uh, Brian O'Neill, who, who also worked at Dig back in the day, uh, have, uh, were building the future of pinball. Uh, building devices that are going to go in inside old pinball machines and send data to the cloud nice. and have an app where you can keep track of your scores and everything. So uh, super excited. We're going to actually have some more announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks um, as uh, we, you know, we kind of move forward. But we uh, uh, the hardware development is hard and it is continuing uh, in a positive direction. So happy, happy to report that. Oh, man, I'm so I'm so proud of you guys. It's I love yeah. watching the progress of this. So awesome. Did you, uh, Jason? I think you were out when the fa when the Fast Company article came out. I think oh. you were out. Uh, yeah. Uh, hang oh, on, I'll have to look that up. Uh, well, no, I'll give you the link now. Yeah. So uh, Fast Company caught wind of what we were doing, and uh, here I just replaced it in the doc, Victor, so you can do that. And they did a profile on uh, us and the fo the fine. They mentioned the fine folks that folks that Stern, Stern Pinball and what they're doing, and uh, but mainly it's focused on what we're doing. Admittedly, with a with more of a focus on Jay, but I think he's more of a known uh, yep. factor to the fast company world than I am. Yep. But uh, but yeah, but it was great to see. Uh, great to see. It's basically a a straight up profile of what we've been doing and what the what the product is going to be. And there's actually, if you scroll down, there's a picture of the of the device. Uh, one more photo down, Victor. If you scroll down, uh, you can see. Scorbitron. Yeah, there, yeah, there's our hardware device that we've designed and are going to be manufacturing soon. So right on. Yeah. 
That is so exciting. Nice. I can't wait to read this article. I'll read it after the show. Yeah, it's good stuff. Congratulations once again. Thanks. Yes, and I can't wait to hear the news. Uh, you can find me all across the Twit network next week, especially Leo, Leo is out. So I'm filling in for him on three different shows. So you'll see a lot of me next week. Uh, so I got to rest up for that. And I do my resting camping, which is where I'll be for the rest of the week. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. Victor, thank you so much for, uh, for everything that you do for the show. Really appreciate it. No problem. And thanks to Dave and Liz from Kansas who are sitting here in the in the audience making me feel Yay. all special and stuff uh thanks for <laughs> stopping by and spending your evening here <laughs> watching us make fools of ourselves or at least myself uh but that is it for this week leave us a voicemail 347 show aaa send us email at triple a at twit.tv you can find us on twitter at android show uh, we have our arena apps list every app that we've ever featured in the arena can be found and it in a, a, a full spreadsheet twit.to slash android apps uh, show notes and past episodes found at twit.tv slash aaa that's where you're going to find all the information that you need to know uh, about about our show subscribe links everything that you need to know including the time we record every tuesday starting at 5 p.m pacific at twit.tv slash live uh, flow we missed you this week and we can't wait to see you next week on another episode of all about android bye everybody see you later